Let me know in the comment section what your favorite device is. And people of the internet, that is the beauty of a custom PC. Being able to quickly change and upgrade parts, whether it's your CPU, motherboard, RAM sticks and whatnot is simple and very convenient. But don't get it twisted, gaming laptops can deliver more than enough in terms of gaming performance and the portability they offer is simply unbeatable. Although it always comes down to your specific needs because owning a PlayStation 5 is cheaper, easier to maintain and more often it delivers an extremely reliable friendly gaming experience. Now you're probably all confused but today I'm going to try to guide you and hopefully allow you to make a better decision on what type of device fits the lifestyle you live. So why a custom PC? Generally, custom computers do deliver that premium experience. If you've never built a custom desktop before, don't worry, it's not as scary as it looks. In fact, I have a video on it that could serve you as a guide. But the matter of the fact is that out of all of your choices, desktops are more flexible when it comes to upgrading, they do deliver better cooling allowing your components to be pushed to yield better performance and they deliver a better bang for your buck in the long run. Although it's not always sunshine and rainbows because this does mean you need to know what you're doing, you lose that portability capability and going over budget is easy. As filmed at the beginning of the video, swapping components within your own build desktop is super easy. Meaning that at any point in time, if you seek to upgrade or replace any component, a custom PC will allow you to do so. There's no need to worry about dealing with solder components. So if you ever find yourself wanting to upgrade your RAM, it is as easy as opening the tabs using the motherboard's manual to know the configuration and aligning these to fit the socket. For my personal build, because I wanted to keep a total of 64 gigabytes of RAM like I previously had, with the help of Kingston Fury Renegade, I was able to simply do so. Kingston has just recently announced the rebranding of their memory products for gaming with the launch of its new brand Kingston Fury. They deliver dynamic random access memory and soon SSD products for our gaming needs. My unit of choice delivers sweet dynamic RGB with their infrared sync technology to match my theme. Also, with speeds up to 4600 MHz, low latency DDR4 performance and kits that deliver up to a total of 256GB, this Intel XMP certified and AMD Ryzen ready memory is definitely one to consider if you decide to build a custom PC. Although if you are currently rocking a gaming laptop that seems to need an upgrade in terms of RAM, you can always check out their new Kingston Fury Impact that delivers speeds up to 3200MHz and supports Intel and AMD's latest CPU technologies. Kingston also offers a lifetime warranty with the Renegade DDR4 sticks which is also something to expect with some of your PC components. With separate warranties associated with certain components, if anything fails within your system you are responsible for locating that issue. The upside is that your build is repairable but the downside is that there's no overall customer support, free servicing or even a full cover warranty on the whole PC itself. You individually need to deal with the manufacturer for that part to simply provide you with a free replacement. But from experience, after replacing my Katana RAM memory from Antec, I was confident enough that if something was to happen to my build, things are pretty easy to solve provided the brand you are dealing with has good customer support on their parts. However, once your build fully runs adequately, it is your responsibility to make sure all the drivers are updated to make sure your components are in sync. A lot of the times, these motherboards do come with their own software to help you out, but when it comes to the most essential part of your build, you need to make sure your graphics card drivers are properly installed. Desktop GPUs overall get a serious speed advantage comparing them to laptop GPUs and your next gen console graphics card, mainly because within these systems the power limits are way higher, meaning that with bigger fans and more air to cool down, your GPU can push higher clock speeds and deliver way more frames per second within your AAA games. But 
generally ever since the 1000 series, performance degradation can be observed when gaming in 4K because today gaming's laptops are able to deliver great performance when gaming in 1080p, which is why it's important to think about the games you want to play within your system, mostly if you're looking to push 120 FPS in 4K. But with today's market, the whole desktop PC world is a bit more complicated, therefore be ready to spend, mostly if you really want to take advantage of that 4K gaming experience. As a result, don't forget that unlike gaming laptops, you need to make sure you allocate some budget on a mouse, a keyboard, and a monitor. With all of this in mind, generally gaming laptops tend to cost more because these are an all-in-one portable package that can deliver proper quad HD displays with 240Hz, OLED panels with 4K resolutions at 60Hz, and even Full HD displays with 360Hz, which often means that for gaming, to obtain performance you need to connect it to power. With today's market, specking a custom PC relatively similar to my current blade yields a total price of $2,464.98 without a monitor monitor, a mouse, and a keyboard, which makes my $2,900 razor blade a potential candidate. One thing to keep in mind is that even though desktop and laptop GPUs now contain the same silicon, the performance difference is only noticeable because of the thermals provided by the chassis. Remember that engineers are looking to cram as much power as they can in tight spaces without overheating the system. Therefore, giving up some power to be able to acquire portability is definitely a plus for a lot of people, but this does mean that your device can get quite hot when pushing it to its limits. Gaming laptops are getting really good nowadays and to top it all off, they are getting more powerful with more cores as well as chassis that are thinner and lighter. With these, there's no need to know how to put components together and you will have customer support along your device. You can always even opt to get extended warranties in case something happens and most of the time, since these are such small objects to ship, shipping cost is not a deal breaker. Just know that companies usually pay for this type of stuff. On top of this, with a gaming laptop, you still have the choice to treat it a bit like a desktop. In other words, you can of course connect a gaming mouse to it, a keyboard of your choice, and simply dock it with a monitor if you wish to do so. In my case, since I do have a beautiful 240Hz Quad HD display within my razor blade, I really don't have the need to dock it at all. But even though I'm running an RTX 3060 within this configuration, if I ever wish to have 3080-like performance, I can always buy an external GPU enclosure and install a full desktop size GPU instead. Just make sure your gaming device is Intel based and has Thunderbolt 3 at 40 gigabytes per second. So extending your laptop's longevity is definitely a thing. Mostly because most devices do offer the ability to upgrade the RAM as well as the M.2 memories which is really cool. However, as you might have known, the rest of the internals are simply not upgradable. If something breaks, you're going to most likely have to replace the entire motherboard since most components are soldered into it. And a lot of the time, if out of warranty, the the cost of those repairs can match half of the price of the laptop. It's always important to ask yourself how long will this laptop last for me. Desktop PCs can be maintained but on the laptop side of things it's quite a different story. The disadvantages are pretty straightforward, not only you're running on a battery but you have lower power components which means less FPS so higher resolution gaming can be tough to achieve. To their defense, if there is a power outage at least you can still use the computer. And not that anyone really cares but laptops are nicer on your electricity bill, which is why the portability factor is unbeatable for a lot of people. If you are a student that tends to game a lot or even someone that is on the go, a gaming laptop will always win, mostly because you do have an all-in-one device that can not only be used for gaming but for almost everything else as well. Over the years, batteries have gotten really good even when gaming in full performance mode. If I am playing Cold War at 1440p with 240Hz, my laptop generally delivers a total stable 30 frames per second with two hours of use provided I'm only doing that the whole time. And the laptop is of course not connected to power. I also wanted to show you guys how the 4K gaming was on such a spec and after running Cold War at 4K with 60Hz I obtained an average FPS of 26. But note that on my RTX 3060 I only have a total of 6GB of VRAM so running games at really high settings at 4K struggles, which is why it's important to consider the resolution at which you will be playing games. The chances are that if you want to achieve 4K gaming you will most likely spend more money on a laptop, but if you are comfortable gaming at 1080p and even 1440p on some titles, the RTX laptop GPUs will be more than enough. Although don't forget that because you have less fans and a tighter space to push air, the fans on the laptop can get really loud. Down, 
Some laptops are better than others and I have to admit razor blades have great quiet fans, but if you want something that is truly quiet and feels fanless, the PlayStation 5 is definitely a go-to. With these new next-gen consoles, 4K has become the new standard and they can deliver up to 120 frames per second within certain titles. Gaming computers are expensive and I find it extremely awesome being able to access 4K gaming at 60 frames with PCIe for storage at a fraction of the price. Not to forget, but most consoles are self-sustained. Unlike a Windows machine, there's no need to keep up with installing drivers, 10 different launchers, a separate chat app opened, and constant crashes that may happen due to other programs running in the background. Consoles are super user-friendly, easy to hop on with friends, and are very much gaming-oriented. Yes, you can go ahead and connect a mouse and a keyboard on certain titles, but the beauty of a console like the PlayStation 5 is that on exclusive games, you truly get to experience your games through the DualSense controller. Also, loading times for games are really reduced at such price, and like I mentioned, exclusive titles are very much reserved for the console itself. So playing games such as Spider-Man, Gran Turismo, and The Last of Us is not possible on PC. Plus, the whole UI that a console delivers is very much focused on the ability to game and play media at your convenience. So being able to rapidly access menus and launch apps is so much more appropriate when all you want to do is game. On top of that, with the latest beta the PlayStation have launched, you can now expand the internal storage and take full advantage of the internal SSD bay, which overall is such a simple process to do and can take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes according to spawn point. So if you want a more intensive guide on this, please do make Make sure to check his video. And I obviously want to stress that you really don't need a TV in order to get the most out of your PlayStation 5. 120Hz TVs can be very expensive, but with monitors, you can truly fully unlock that and more with less than $400. Now even though consoles deliver great UIs and UX is relatively tied to the gaming experience, there are of course downsides to them. For starters, having full control over your graphics with sliders and so on is practically not possible. Most of the time, ray tracing Racing, frames per second and hertz are all developer based, meaning that it's up to the developers of the game to make sure they deliver those features. On top of that, the online gaming service is not free like on PC and generally titles tend to be cheaper. With crossplay now enabled on a few games, it is overall cool and all but you find yourself playing with modders and raging all the time. But overall, yeah, I mean mods are not really a thing on consoles as they are on PC which can make your gaming experience feel a bit limited mostly if you're gaming on GTA. And if you happen to enjoy the Discord service and hopping on with friends in there, well the console really won't allow you to do so. But in my opinion, with all these drawbacks, the most important one to consider here is what are most of your friends playing on? In my case, most people I know tend to own consoles and the user experience when it comes to connecting with them is so much cleaner compared to PC. Although if your goal is to stream and develop a whole streaming career on Twitch, simply relying on a PlayStation 5 or a console won't cut it at all. Honestly guys, at the end of the day, your lifestyle is the factor that will decide. For a lot of people, upgradability isn't a relevant factor at all since they spend a lot of money from the get-go to make sure their system lasts for at least 5 years. But look, overall, a PC will most likely always outperform a laptop and a console. PCs also require much more setup like having peripherals, a space in your room to put it in, and time to build. Which is why a gaming laptop can be great if you move around a lot, use your computer for other things such as cool projects, and you love watching movies in bed. Otherwise, getting a console at the fraction of the price, taking into account the performance it delivers is a tough choice, but it is one to make if most of your gaming buddies and preferred titles happen to be on the PlayStation or on the Xbox. Regardless, I hope this video helps and I know it's not the best time to put this out there. With back to school coming soon, I know a lot of you guys are looking for the perfect tablet or perfect laptop to bring to school, which is why next week I will be reviewing the Dell XPS 13 for you guys. Stay tuned and don't forget to smash the like button for more. Take care.